If you're looking to get your hands on a bunch of vacuum tubes for cheap, a good thing to search for is an old radio or TV repairman lot. Uh, oftentimes this will have anywhere from 50 to several hundred vacuum tubes in it for very, very cheap. And oftentimes you can find them for about 10 cents to, to 20 cents a tube. Because a lot of the tubes in there are not all that super desirable by the hi-fi audio community. Uh, but for the things that, that I'm doing and that we're doing, which is playing with them at really low voltages and seeing how we can push them and what kind of interesting things we can build with them, this is perfect. But within that lot, there's going to be a ton of these little guys. And I've got, I've got two here. This one is a 6AU6 and this is a 6CB6. And uh, both of these are little 7-pin uh, sharp cutoff pentodes. And so you're going to end up with a bunch of these if you end up uh, buying some of those lots that are repairman lots. And these were very common in, in old TVs and they made these by the thousands and thousands. So there's a bunch of them out there and they can be had for really pretty cheap. But they're not desirable by the, the audio community. So I wonder if they can offer anything good to us. I mean, I, I have between 6CB6 and 6AU6, I have almost 200 of these. Uh, so I have far too many of them, but it would be nice if we could build something with them, right? Like if we could make some flip flops or something like that, that would be awesome. So what I wanna do today is, first of all, take a look at what exactly is a pentode and how does it differ from a triode? And then uh, let, let's maybe take a look at what the characteristics of it are at 24 volts, the voltage that we're running at. So let's hop over to the bench and see if we can figure out what exactly this thing is. So let's start by putting the basics down here. We have, uh, in every tube, we have a plate up here. And then we have a cathode down here. And that cathode is heated by a heater. And this heater can be at several different volts, but uh, for all the tubes that we're using, it's very often at uh, 6.3 volts. And then our cathode, we will tie to ground. Uh, and we saw in the previous episode that there's actually several different ways we can handle that. We can put a resistor on there, but for now we'll just go ahead and tie you to ground. And if we put a large positive voltage on here, this is actually just a diode, right? So a diode is a dielectrode. That means that there are two electrodes. We have the cathode and the plate. And then we added something in. We added in a grid right down here, and that made it a triode. And this grid could control the flow of electrons that bubble off of our cathode down here to go to the positive source at our plate up here. So remember, as this heater gets hot, those electrons start to form and they start to build a little cloud down here. And then if we have a negative charge on our grid, it keeps those electrons from passing by and making it to the plate. But if we uh, bring that charge closer to zero or even above zero, those electrons can pass through and make it up to the plate. Now, the triode has an inherent problem with it. And that is that when the grid lets the electrons fly by, those electrons come all the way up to here and they hit the plate. Now the plate has a sudden influx of electrons. And so its potential with respect to the cathode tends to drop a little bit. And when it drops a little bit, well, the difference between the two gets less. And so it has less of an attraction on the electrons. So it pulls fewer electrons up there. And this creates a sort of oscillation as the number of electrons then starts to slow down, the potential of the, the plate comes back up again, and then the electrons flow again and smash into the plate. More electrons brings it down. You end up with this kind of weird oscillation going on. And so this created an issue in really high frequency applications. It's never going to be a problem for the 24 volt uh, low frequency stuff that we're doing, uh, but it led to other developments. And one of those developments was to uh, put another grid in here. So we put in another grid right here in the middle. And what we do with this grid is we run it through a resistor. 
and we tie it to our high voltage. Now that seems really strange. Why would we tie this to high voltage? Because we, we don't want it to control things. You know, if we tie our grid to high voltage all the time, you're just always gonna have a flow of electrons. Well, you gotta remember this is our control grid. So it's actually controlling whether the electrons flow or not. And this grid is spacious enough that the electrons don't really run into it. So what this does is it creates a sort of reference point for the electrons. So when we take our control grid here, so we'll just call this, we'll call this the control grid. When we take our control grid here and we give it a positive voltage, the strong plus voltage on this is creating a strong attraction for those electrons and they start to flow really quickly this way. But when they get to this grid, they pass right by it because they're going so fast they can't stop and make the turn to be sucked into this grid to make their way to, to the positive voltage that way. And then they come up here and they hit the plate. So what it's doing is it creates a nice strong positive potential for the electrons to flow very quickly this way. And then when the electrons hit the plate and the plate has a little dip in its uh, potential, its positive potential, the electrons don't care because that strong positive potential of this uh, screen grid doesn't change. And so we always get a nice strong flow of electrons up regardless of any fluctuations or changes in the potential of the plate up here. And that's great, that's fantastic. And so this is actually a tetrode. So tetra can mean four and then electrode. So we have our cathode, we have two grids, and we have our plate. So this is a tetrode. This is actually another very common type of, uh, of vacuum tube. And you can find these in a lot of old TVs and, and things. Uh, but these had a problem as well, actually. When these electrons get to the plate, they're moving at just absolutely ridiculous speeds. And sometimes when they hit the plate, what they do is they knock other electrons off. So they hit so hard that electrons get ejected out. And when those electrons get ejected out, this is called secondary emissions. And they tend to get attracted to the screen grid here. And the screen grid is designed to have a positive voltage on it, but it's not designed to absorb a ton of electrons. So this created uh, other issues, other weird oscillations. And so uh, the question then became, how do we stop that from happening? And so then the answer was to put another grid in. <laughs> so they put in another grid and this grid is really, really sparse. You know, I, I draw them all with three or four lines, but uh, when you look at the actual tube on the inside, this, this grid is really, really sparse. There's big, huge openings in it. And it is, tied low and oftentimes it's tied directly to the cathode within the tube itself. Now on our uh, little 6AU6 and 6CB6 it's not internally tied but we'll, we'll we tie it externally to the cathode. All right so this grid is actually called the suppressor and because the suppressor grid is tied to the cathode, it has a negative charge. And so these secondary emission electrons that come flying off of the plate see that negative charge and they go, nope, we're gonna head back up this way. And they head back up and eventually the plate collects them all. And well, now you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five elements inside of here and penta means five. And so there we go. That is our pentode. So now we have a basic idea of how the pentode works and what we need to do with the additional grids. It seems really complicated. A triode is really simple. You just have one, two, three. And these extra two can seem confusing, but we know that one of them always gets tied to the cathode. And we know that we want to tie this one to positive voltage. And the value of this resistor is often really low. And I've seen the value range anywhere from 400 ohms to 1,000 ohms. And uh, we're using something slightly smaller than that because it was just what I had on hand. Uh, but if we take a look at the data sheet for the 6AU6A, so you can see that 
again, it, it lists all of our grids here on the right. We have you know grid number one, grid number three, which is the suppressor, and grid number two, which is the screen. And, and it gives us a lot of information about the, uh, about the pentode. But if we kind of flip through, it has an example circuit here for a resistance coupled amplifier. And we can start seeing some of the screen rating charts and the average plate characteristics. And a lot of this stuff is really hard to wrap your head around. But as I was flipping through it, I noticed something interesting on this page right here. And that is that it says triode connection. Wow, okay, so we could theoretically hook our pentode up as a triode, but how do we do that? Well, it says right here that screen and suppressor are tied to the plate. So by tying the screen and suppressor to the plate, we essentially make a really large plate because the potential of the screen and suppressor grid change with the potential of the plate. And that kind of just ignores all of the effects of the pentode. Well, I got, I got really curious about that. So I, I wanted to see what the difference was between the two. So I have two circuits today that I want to take a look at, and I'll just draw them out real quick on the paper here. So these are the two basic circuits that we have set up on the board today that I want to take a look at. And you can see that they're pretty close. We have uh, our, our 24 volts coming in through a 10K plate resistor on the top here. And then we'll measure the output uh, at the actual plate itself, just like a standard uh, inverting amplifier that we did before. Now where they differ is how we have the screen and suppressor grid hooked up. So you can see that on this one we have the screen grid hooked up through a 100 ohm resistor to 24 volts. And then the suppressor grid is hooked up to the cathode and the cathode is hooked up to ground. And on this one we've taken the screen and uh, suppressor grid and we've hooked them directly up to the plate. So this is a pentode connection. And this is a triode connection. So hopefully we should be able to see some kind of difference between the two. Now I got curious about how the input would work and so we have a 100,000 ohm resistor potentiometer down here and I've got one end of it hooked up to negative 12 and the other end that will hook up to 6 and then to 24 a little later and we're going to twist this left to right and we're going to run that into the uh, control grid on both of these. Now I, I forgot to draw on here there is actually a little resistor on both of these that goes through. And it's actually a little uh, 4.7k ohm resistor. So I didn't want to hurt the grid too much by, by doing this. But uh, as I said, these tubes are pretty cheap and so I think it would be fun to ram 24 volts into the grid and, and see what the output is. So these are the two circuits that we have set up on the breadboard. But with LEDs, it's going to be kind of hard to see what the difference is between the two, um, especially at the 24 volts that we're running at. Uh, and so to get a better idea, I've, I've actually pulled out the oscilloscope. So we'll pull the breadboard out and we'll hook the oscilloscope up to it. And we'll take a look at how each of these circuits react as I move the potentiometer from negative 12 volts to plus 6 volts or negative 12 volts to plus 24 volts. Okay, so you can see that we have our breadboard set up here, and we've got uh, two vacuum tubes on it. Both of these are 6AU6s, and uh, this one's set up in pentode mode, and this one's set up in triode mode. And they're pretty close to the same. The only difference is, is that the, uh, the suppressor grid and the screen grid are tied to the plate on this one. And so we'll take a look at the pentode mode first, and uh, I've got the output, which is this little red, red wire here, hooked up to my oscilloscope, and I've offset the zero down to here, and this is set up for 5 volts per, per division, because we're running 24 volts, so 25 volts is, is right up here. Uh, and right now it's reading four vo uh, zero volts, because, well, I've, I've got the power supply off. So we'll kick the power supply on, and we, we should see this line jump up to, to 24 volts. <laughs> 
Yeah, there we go. Check that out. That's awesome. Uh, and so the, the tube isn't conducting right now because I've, I've got my little potentiometer here turned all the way to the left. Uh, and so that's hooked up to negative 12 volts. So we've got negative 12 volts coming out of the center pin of the potentiometer through our 4.7K resistor into our control grid on, on both of these tubes. And with uh, negative voltage on the control grid, we're, we're blocking it. And so no electrons are flowing to the plate. And that means that our output is going to be high. So as I, as I turn this knob, we get closer and closer to six volts. And, and as we get more and more positive, the tube will start to conduct. And we should see this line start to move down. So we'll just go ahead and move that. Oh, look at that. There it goes. How cool is that? So we can make, we can make the line jump up and down and dance up and down. That's awesome. That's really cool. All right, so we can see the line move up and down, but uh, we can't really see the difference in characteristics between the pentode mode and the triode mode like this because, well, I'm controlling it by hand, and this is reading at a, at a really fast speed. I think we're at, uh, yeah, we were at 10, 10 microseconds per division, so 10 microseconds per each one of these squares from left to right. And, uh, well, that's... That's just too fast for me to move my fingers and us to see a, a waveform. So we need to slow this way down. And so we'll, we'll slow it down to say 200 milliseconds, uh, 200 milliseconds per division. So 0.2 seconds per each one of these squares. So it has to kind of do a long acquisition. And you can see that's why it says uh, acquiring down here. And so if I move this, well, oh, that's kind of strange. It's hard to read and then it goes away uh, shortly thereafter. So what we need to do is we need to do a, a single shot. So I'll hit this button, this little single button down here, and then I'll rotate the knob uh, left and right, and we should be able to see what the waveform looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, look at that. Awesome. So we, we were able to capture the waveform here, and it gets to stay on the screen for us. And we can see that we start at 24 volts, and then we have a really nice curve all the way down to just about 5 volts. And then we have another nice curve back up to, to 24 volts. And then you can see this was the beginning of the, the second rotation of the knob that I did. That's, that's awesome. That's really cool. So we can see exactly how the tube is responding to a changing input voltage on the grid. So let's take a look at triode mode now. So we'll, we'll disconnect the probe over here and we'll hook it up onto this side. So uh, this is on the triode mode tube and it's controlled with the same potentiometer. So we'll, we'll do a single shot again and I'll rotate the potentiometer again. Look at that. Now that is a very different looking waveform. But you can see that we have much sharper turns here and turns when we get to the bottom. And we got this little bump in the middle here. So it's not as smooth looking as the previous waveform. And that's the difference in, in how the triode mode and the pentode mode is operating at the voltages that we're running it at. When you get to higher frequencies and uh, uh, higher voltages, uh, we should, you should see these different characteristics kind of exacerbated. Um, so let's tell you what, let's go back to the pentode mode here. And, and what I'm curious about mostly is this, this little edge right here. You can see that we hit a, a sharp cutoff here. And that's where the potentiometer hits its stop. And we're just at whatever, 6 volts. So let's, well, let's ram it way past that. Let's run it up to 24 volts. You're not supposed to do this. I don't recommend this. But these are cheap tubes. And in the name of science, I'm willing to put a little bit of stress on them. So we'll go back to pent out mode here. And I'm just going to move this little resistor here over to my jumper that kicks it over to 24 volts. So there we go. That should be 24 volts coming off of this rail through our little 1000 ohm resistor into this pin of the potentiometer here. So it should swing between negative 12 volts and plus 24 volts. And so we should be able to see, well, quite a different waveform. So I'll, I'll, I'll hit the, the button here again and let's give it a shot. Wow, now that's interesting. There's, there's some really interesting weird stuff going on here. Uh, you can see that that on the bottom here that we, we, we kind of curve and flatten out and then it actually bumps up a little bit and it when it when I'm at the full stop it it's bumped up and then as I come off the stop and come back down 
we actually drop down a bit before we build up again. Now it's interesting to note that the tube never really drops below, uh, our output never really drops below five volts. So whether we're running 24 volts into it or six volts into it, we've pretty much hit full saturation with an output of five volts. So there was no difference in our output. We got this little weird bump here in the middle. And I, I think what's happening here is we're starting to see uh, that as we make the positive voltage going into the grid higher and higher, it's starting to absorb some electrons, as is the screen grid. And they're starting to pull in electrons and pull those electrons away from the plate. And the fewer electrons that make it to the plate, the, well, the higher our output is going to come. And I think that's what we're seeing here. That's really interesting. All right, well, let's, let's try it on the triode mode here and see if we can see a difference there. So I'll put it on the triode mode. Uh, I'll hit the button. And we'll rotate the knob. Now that's interesting. We don't get that bump that we got before. Uh, and you can see it just comes down again to actually a little below 5 volts. And then we hit a hard stop there and it comes back up again. Now, what's interesting about this is we don't have that little bump that we were seeing on the pentode mode. That little increase after we've hit a certain point. And that's because if the suppressor grid and the uh, screen grid are absorbing electrons, it doesn't matter because they're tied to the plate. So those electrons that the, the suppressor and the screen grid are catching are just being transferred into the plate. And since we're measuring directly at the plate voltage, we don't see that, that interesting bump there. Well, that's, that's super cool. We can see a direct difference Let's go back. Let's go back and check the, the pinto mode one more time. This is, this is fun. I enjoy doing this. <laughs> yeah, check that out. So we've got, we've got that little bump right there. Let's, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Uh, let's see here. Let's, let's adjust our position a bit and bring it down here. So I'll do it one more time. We're just going to take a look at just this bit here. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now that we've zoomed in a bit, we can see it a lot clearer. And you, you can see it, it kind of comes down and then we start to go back up again. And, and where it goes flat is where I've hit the stop on my potentiometer here. And I, I imagine if I were to keep running voltage into it, it would keep going up like that. So I, we can see that this spot right here is where the, the grids are starting to absorb some electrons and take those electrons away from the plate. Wow, that's really interesting. That's really cool. So we're, we're getting a really cool idea of the different ways we can hook up the pentode. And now I, I do like how smooth the pentode is. And uh, I think hooking it up in, in pentode operation is not necessarily a bad thing. But for the, the circuits that we're building and the circuits that I'm going to be building in the future, I, I'm mostly caring about uh, high and low. I don't really care about the stuff that happens in the middle because I'm kind of leaning towards a more computing aspect of these things. Uh, so I'm interested in, you know, flip-flops and latches and, and half adders and things like that. So that high and low is what's important to me. And so the characteristics that we looked at today don't really affect that all that much. Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that we, we don't want to ram 24 volts into the grid and end up with some weird issues going on down here and actually potentially harming the tube. But uh, that's, Man, that's really cool. I'm really excited about, about the pentode here because I, I have, as I said, I have a lot of these. So I'm excited for how we can use them. And so that's, that's essentially how the pentode works. And uh, I, think, I think next time we'll, we'll take a look at something with even more grids in it. We'll take a look at the pentagrid.